Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Wendy Liang. I'm working as an Linux kernel developer for Cruise, which it is a company to produce driverless cars. I have working experience with heterogeneous system communication and management. I worked with Linux kernel remote proc, IP message, proc, reset, and DMA buff framework. In today's uh, presentation, I'm going to talk about DMA buff usage in automotive sensor data pipeline. Thanks everyone for joining today's presentation. Here's today's agenda. I will briefly talk about automotive sensor camera data pipeline. And next, we'll briefly introduce DMA buff. And then I'm going to talk about how to use DMA buff and DMA fences to set up a zero copying data pipeline and for synchronization between each same points. Automotive sensor camera data pipeline example. This image shows a um, driverless car. There are sensors installed on the car. The road condition data captured by the sensor and camera will pass to ISP for peak processing. And then the data will be passed on to accelerator pipelines for further processing. And then the, the outcome data will then be passed on to host for the next stage computation. There were a lot of data coming from sensor. And so how to process the data efficiently and how to transfer the data in the pipeline efficiently is a challenge. DMA buff is a good solution to help to accept a to have um, efficient data transfer across the data pipeline. DMA buff. DMA buff is a framework for sharing buffers for hardware DMA access across multiple device drivers and subsystems. It is for, and it is also for synchronizing asynchronous hardware access. It has three subcomponents. The core component is DMA buff. It defines the uh, it defines DMA buff operations for the underlying memory blocks. DMA heaps, which it is a implementation of a DMA buff exporter and it provides user user space um, interface for user to allocate DMA buff from a particular memory region. DMA fence. DMA fence is used for synchronization between the hardware and user application and between um, hardware drivers. DMA buff. DMA buff um, is shared DMA buffers. It has a buffer exporter for user to allocate DMA buff from some memory region. And each buffer has users. The users can be in kernel space or in user space. DMA buff is a scatter gather list of memory block. The underlying memory can be contiguous or discontinuous. Each DMA buff is represented by a file descriptor so that the user's space application can access the DMA buff with normal buff, uh, file operations. DMA buff operations is to enable user to attach to the buffer and access um, the buffer memory. Here is an example on how to use um, DMA buff. The user application use DMA heap iOcto alloc syscall to request a DMA buff. It, use, it, it, it uses the, um, the DMA heap allocation uh, iOcto arguments to pass on the land and the the uh, the file permission flags 
and the Hips memory um, attribute flex onto the iOpto. And the underlying uh, DMA heap will, will allocate the related memory and return back user a file descriptor for the, uh, for the allocated memory. And then the user application can use the app map to get the virtual address for the uh, DMA bar so that it can later on read or write the underlying um, DMA memory. If user uh, need to pass the DMA buff onto the next, onto uh, other devices, the other devices driver will need to implement a uh, iOcto to allow the user space application to add, attach the DMA buff uh, to the device. If the driver implements such a iOcto API, and then the application can use that iOcto syscall to attach the DMA buff to the device memory. And after the device uh, driver receives such a request, it can, uh, it can call the DMA buff get to get a DMA buff um, data object from the DMA buff uh, file description and attach the device to the DMA buff with the DMA buff attach API. And it can get the scatter list from the DMA buff with the DMA buff map attachment API. And with this scatter getter list returned back from this API, the driver knows the DMA address of the buffers so that it can configure the hardware registers for the hardware to access the DMA memory. And for synchronization, the device driver can create a DMA fence so that later on it can return back to the user so that the user can pull the DMA fence or the next uh, device driver can also pull the DMA fence to know um, the completion status of this uh, device on this DMA buff. So uh, buffer exporter. So a buffer exporter is to create a DMA buff to wrap around the DMA memory and return the DMA uh, buff uh, file descriptor to the caller. It is responsible for the DMA memory allocation and manage coherency of the allocated memory, um, such as device access and CPU access. Uh, for the device access, that is, after the, the CPU application um, produce some data to the memory, and before the uh, memory, before the device can access the memory, this device access operation will make sure, uh, for example, flush the cache um, to make sure the the data, the correct data, is uh, is put onto the underlying memory so that the device can get the correct data. And the CPU access is for the other direction. That is, after the device produced the, mem uh, the data to the memory and before the the, uh, the CPU can access um, that memory, uh, this operation um, will do some, um, will do the necessary, uh, will, will execute the necessary steps, uh, such as um, invalidate cache if it is required um, to make sure the application or the driver, uh, the software uh, can get the correct data from the underlying memory. And it provides um, memory uh, DMA buff memory map functions for kernel and user space users uh, so that they can access the memory. Manage backing storage for the attached devices of the buff DMA buff, such as pin and pin the DMA buff memory, notify attached devices if the underlying physical memory needs to move. Here's a list of buffer, uh, the DMA buff operation, a buffer exporter need to implement. Um, the attach, detach, map DMA buff, uh, map DMA buff, uh, release, and map, uh, remap, re-unmap. Um, 
The others, such as the PIN, UNPIN, um, BEGIN CPU, SS, and CPU SS, this uh, can be optional. It depends on um, uh, the, um, the it depends on um, the memory uh, attributes um, of this uh, memory region. But the others are usually required. And uh, in the kernel, there is one example for a buffer exporter, uh, DMA UDMA buff, um, which it is to export DMA buff for shared mem uh, regions. The user application um, uses shared mem create API to get a um, memory file descriptor from the shared memory. And with the UDMA buff um, IOTO API, it tells the uh, the DMA the UDMA buff um, the memory uh, file descriptor, and then the um, the UDMA uh, buff uh, driver will create a DMA buff for it for the specified region and return it back to user application. Uh, one um, use case. Uh, to use this UDMA buff is uh, for QMU. Uh, QMU use it to create a DMA buff for what I own GPU, for example. There were other uh, buffer exporters uh, in Linux kernel. Um, you can find those examples from um, video pipeline drivers framework. Um, buffer users. The buffer user can be in kernel space or in user space. Um, for user space, um, after it requests, after uh, it uh, allocate a uh, DMA uh, buff from Linux kernel, for example, uh, it requests a uh, DMA buff with the uh, DMA heap IOCTO API, um, it already uh, attached the, uh, this application is already attached to the DMA buff. And um, when it needs to access the uh, memory for read and write, um, it, will need to, it, uh, it will need to call the MMAP API to get the virtual address. And uh, for uh, Linux kernel uh, drivers, in order to attach the device to the DMA buff, um, it needs to call the DMA buff attach operation as shown in um, in uh, one of the previous slides. And if the driver itself want to access the, uh, the underlying memory, uh, it can use the VMAP operation um, to access the uh, DMA memory. Um, the attach operation, it is mandatory for the driver to call uh, because the DMA buff, uh, it maintain a counter. So if, um, the counter drops to zero, that is no user, the DMA buff will be released. So um, before uh, the device um, finish consuming the buffer, the driver is responsible to make sure the device is attached to the DMA buff. And when um, the device has done with the buffer, the driver will need to call detach. Uh, to detach the device from the buffer. So um, here it shows um, there is a exporter implemented in the Linux kernel provides user a IOCTO API for user to allocate mem uh, DMA buff and each uh, devices in the pipeline will need to have uh, drive its driver implement a IOCTO API for the user to attach the DMA buff to each of the devices. DMA heap. DMA heap is a framework for memory allocators to export allocated memory as DMA buff. DM, um, it is a DMA buff exporter and it also has a device file interface for user to use IOCTO to allocate DMA buffers. Uh, 
Linus kernel, uh, it implements two heaps. One is the system memory heap, the other is the CMA heap. When user allocate memory, uh, request DMA buff from the system heap, the system heap driver will allocate DMA memory from the Linux system memory. And then driver wants to get a uh, DMA buff from the CMA heap. The uh, underlying CMA heap driver will allocate the memory from the CMA pool. And here it shows that um, you can specify a particular memory region with a uh, reserved memory um, to the CMA heap. And then um, the CMA uh, specified by this reserved memory will be used as the Linux CMA pool. And when you use the uh, CMA heap API to allocate a, a DMA buff, uh, it will get the um, memory from this specified uh, CMA pool region. So here shows a um, user, uh, user space API to request a uh, DMA buff, DMA heap I auto alloc. And uh, when it returns the DMA buff, the DMA buff file descriptor will be uh, specified in the I octo's um, argument structure. And this, uh, the length it is uh, for user to specify um, the size and the FD flex is the file um, uh, is the uh, permission of the DMA buff file. And the hip in, in the hip flex is for the uh, memory uh, attributes. Um, so besides um, the DMA buff operation um, required by uh, DMA buff uh, exporter. Um, the DMA heap um, driver will also need to implement a DMA buff allocate uh, op uh, operation to allow user to allocate um, DMA buff from the uh, from the heap. In this example, uh, it uses reserved memory to specify a uh, DMA heap region. And um, in order to uh, register the heap to the DMA buff framework, so that the user can use that DMA heap um, uh, allocation I octo, uh, it will need to call this uh, DMA heap add API to register the heap to the DMA buff framework. DMA fans. DMA fence is a Linux kernel internal synchronization primitive for DMA operation. Um, besides a single DMA fence um, data structure, Linux kernel also provide DMA fence array um, and DMA fence chain uh, data structure uh, to uh, group DMA fences. DMA fence can be exposed as a sync file for user space to inquire DMA fence status. And the sync file can be passed around explicit synchronization points. And DMA buff can also store DMA fences with DMA reservation um, for implicit write and resynchronization. Um, later on in the presentation, we will show more on the uh, sync file usage uh, because it is more explicit. And with uh, this sync file, uh, it is um, very easy uh, to get the notification for the DMA operation on each buffer. And um, if uh, any um, buffer failed any uh, DMA operations. Um, so this is uh, the um, some uh, example code for uh, DMA fans creation and DMA fans um, usage. Um, to create a DMA fans, uh, 
uh, we'll need to allocate the memory for the DMA fence because uh, when the, a DMA fence is released, it will usually uh, the underlying uh, the allocated uh, fence will got released. Um, and use this DMA fence in need to initialize the fence. And if we want to create a sync file for the fence, um, and uh, we will call this sync file create, and we will get a file descriptor uh, for the sync file. And for user application, user can pull on the DMA fence file descriptor to know if uh, the fence is signaled. <coughs> And uh, for the Linux uh, space kernel driver, um, can use a DMA fence wait to to wait for the fence to be signaled. <coughs> um, DMA fence arrays. So DMA fences array is an array of DMA fences. Uh, the, the array itself is represented as a DMA fence. And this array is um, can be configured to be signaled if any fence in the array is signaled or if all the fences uh, in the array are signaled. So it has two configurations. And DMA fences chain. A DMA fences chain is composed of a previous um, fence and a associated uh, fence to the current chained node. It is signaled if all previous um, fences in the chain and the associated fence are signaled. So here is um, here shows how to um, create. Uh, how to create a DMA fence in the pipeline. Um, after the application allocate a buffer from the exporter, it will attach the DMA buff to the device uh, with the device driver provided attachment API. And then the device will create a fence and it will return back and create a fence and create a sync file for the fence and return the sync file back to the application. And then the application will pass the DMA buff to the next um, device and um, also the previous um, sync file uh, of the uh, of this uh, created by the uh, by the previous device driver um, about this uh, on this DMA buff. And the next device itself will create a, uh, defend, a, DMA, defend, uh, a DMA fence for its own um, DMA uh, operation on this buffer and return back the sync file to the user application. And so the, the, the next um, device can call the DMA fence wait API on the previous, on the uh, DMA fence created by the previous device to know um, if the previous device is done with this buffer before, uh, before uh, it requests its own device to work on this DMA buff. And the user application by polling all the same files, it knows the completion status or uh, whether uh, any of the um, uh, any of the uh, accelerator in the pipeline has errors on this uh, DMA buff. So we have talked about uh, the DMA buff, DMA heap, and DMA fences, and now we can use them to create a data pipeline for uh, zero data copying. Um, user will allocate a buffer from a DMA heap. This can be a system heap, uh, CMA heap, or user-defined user platform-specific uh, DMA heap. And it assigns 
the DMA buff to each devices on the pipeline through um, each device's uh, driver's iAuto API. And each device driver will enqueue the buffer or the or a list of buffers from the uh, from user application um, to its hardware. And for each uh, buffer of uh, DMA operation, it creates uh, DMA fences and their sync files uh, for the buffer operation completion, uh, completion or failure notification. Here shows uh, we used a reserved memory uh, to specify the DMA uh, memory region. Um, usually in a system, there are multiple memories and um, each uh, memory can has uh, different memory attributes and also um, each devices can have uh, different latencies to access different um, memories. And here we use a uh, reserved memory um, to specify a memory, uh, a preferred memory region for this group of devices. And we have uh, implement a DMA heap for this memory region. And um, the user will use the DMA heap uh, allocation API to request a DMA buff. And after it get a DMA buff from the DMA heap, um, it call the device drivers defined uh, attachment API to attach the DMA buff to the device. For this device, uh, the underlying uh, DMA hardware, it requires each DMA buff has a DMA buffer descriptor for it. And the DMA buffer descriptors also need to be uh, stored in memory. And so the device driver will allocate, you. Uh, this allocation is just use a uh, normal DMA um, alloc coherent API to uh, allocate the memory for the buffer descriptor for this uh, buffer. And the device driver will also create fences um, for complete for DMA operation completion and errors and return um, the uh, sync file for this uh, DMA fence uh, back to the um, user application through the iOcto API return. Um, and the user application will attach um, the buffer and also the uh, sync file created by the previous driver to the next device driver and the next device driver will um, uh, create a uh, DMA buff and, and a sync file for its own operation on this DMA buff and so that the, the user application um, can monitor, can pull all the DMA, uh, the, the sync files returned back by the device drivers. Um, and um, the next device driver can wait on the DMA fans uh, created by the previous driver to know um, if the previous driver has done with the buffer before it starts its own DMA operation on this buffer. So here, uh, this diagram shows how we use the DMA fence to notify user for buffer completion or errors. Um, after uh, the device driver uh, get the DMA buff request from the user through the, uh, uh, when the user call the iOcto syscall, it get the DMA uh, address uh, from the DMA buff and configure the registers of the uh, accelerator so that the accelerator can start DMA operation. And when uh, the accelerator uh, finish the, uh, the DMA operation successfully, it will raise an interrupt back to the driver and the driver will check the interrupt status know, to know that the buffer um, is complete the buffer DMA operation is complete. And then it will signal 
the DMA fans, and then the user application because it is uh, using whole uh, Linux API to wait on the uh, completion uh, on on the um, DMA fences, and so it knows that, um, and so this uh, whole API got a wake up, and uh, it will check um, each of the profile descriptor in the array in the polling array, and then it knows that the buff uh, this buffer is complete. And for the uh, next uh, 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 device driver, and because uh, and it also uh, uh, wait for signal um, on the uh, on the buffer complete um, uh, DMA fans, uh, so uh, it knows when the buffer is complete by the previous uh, accelerator, so that it can start its own DMA operation. Uh, but when there is error happen, the accelerator will also raise interrupt, and the device driver will check the error status or the interrupt status um, register, knows that there is error, and so that it will um, signal the error uh, fence, and the application uh, because it also pull on the uh, error sync file. Uh, so it knows that there is error happened, and also the next device driver, it also wait on the signal, uh, uh, the 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 error signal uh, of the previous uh, DMA operation, and so that it knows that there is error in the previous operation, and and then it it can uh, it knows that it should not um, go ahead uh, with this buffer, so it can. Detach from this buffer. And here it shows the full um, uh, data pipeline with the DMA buff. Um, so we can see that the data coming from the sensor and through MIP bus and it goes to the ISP and it goes to the accelerators before it goes to the host compute. And um, for the uh, embedded uh, Linux system, um, the user application will um, allocate DMA buffers uh, from the DMA heap uh, of the specified DMA region. The DMA region is specified by reserved memory. And then it will pass the DMA buffers to each of the accelerators. So uh, usually there will be input buffer and uh, each um, uh, accelerator uh, will also require a output buffer. So it is input and output and it um, uh, assign the buffers to each of the accelerators on the pipeline. And each driver, uh, after it get the user request, it will create um, DMA fences for those buffers. And the DMA fences, it will cover the DMA buff operation completion. And also uh, there should be a fence to capture the errors and return back to user. And each of the, the, uh, the, the device drivers, it will wait on the uh, DMA fence uh, created by the previous step so that it will not start its DMA operation until the previous one has done. And also it will create the fences for its own DMA operation and give it back to user. And so that once the um, the the pipeline kick off and then when the, 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 the data coming from the sensor and there is no software intervention, um, uh, there's no user space uh, software intervention. Um, and then um, the data will come to uh, the first uh, IP and the driver will monitor the first IP completion status and when it is done, it will trigger the fence uh, 
in the next driver will got notification and it, it will trigger uh, the next um, DMA operation and so on. And so there's no use application intervention is required. Um, and of course, uh, for each IP, uh, uh, this one, it is, uh, uh, we need the, the DMA buff. It is because there is no um, uh, streamlined um, hardware connection between each IPs. Um, and uh, for some customized IPs, um, it is possible that uh, you can use a streamlined interface, for example, like access stream, and then um, uh, you don't need a buffer between um, uh, uh, between the accelerators. But um, and but however, uh, there is also a limitation uh, to this approach. Um, maybe not every hardware IP. Um, can, can do that. And also, if we use some uh, third party IPs, and um, may, maybe um, they just do not have this uh, uh, access stream interface. So, um, in, in, in this case, um, you know, with the DMA buff, um, it provides a, um, a solution, uh, don't need a uh, use application um, intervention. Um, to wait for the previous uh, uh, for, to wait for the previous uh, um, data processing to finish, uh, uh, and then um, trigger the next one. And, um, it is all done uh, by uh, it is all done automatically uh, from the kernel space, um, and this will be uh, quite efficient and also. The pipeline can be um, can, can be set up uh, um, ahead, and um, during runtime, the user application um, don't need to be involved, uh, except it need to uh, except that it just need to monitor for completion status and error status, and. Um, you can find more details about the DMA buff API uh, description from the Linux kernel document. And so that's all for today. And thanks to join the uh, presentation. Thank you very much and have um, a good day. Bye.